Hello everyone, thanks for tuning in again and today I wanted to show you some more drops and random bits of information that I think might be interesting to some of you. So let me just start here on LRM's blog or pretty much everywhere around the web that's uh, related to Red Power. You'll find a link to my recipe list that's over here and below my shameless self-advertising um, I posted a note about converting levels to the new format so some block IDs changed and I'll uh, explain a little later on so um, I already mentioned that in my last video but I thought I would show you the well, success of my undertaking. So right here, you can download right here my automatic level converting script. That's a Python script that I wrote to well facilitate this uh, conversion pretty easy. So you can just fetch it and you'll have it somewhere around. Well. Um, all this is assuming you have a Unix-like, usually Linux system where you're running uh, your server. Or you can also just use it to uh, convert the level. It's just you need a Python environment. You'll have to have the um, PyMac level installed from David Vieira. That's the guy who does um, MC Edit. So that's the library he's using, he's providing. And well, finally, you'll have all this. Um, you have to run the, the script from the directory where the level that file is located. And well, it's pretty easy. You can just either mark the mark the script executable or just run it with Python. Do something like this and it will uh, for a SMP map there will be multiple players. I just um, prepared this rather small level. That's the level I am doing all the other recording when I'm not on the SMP server. It will load all the dimensions one by one, convert the chunks and it will show an estimated time for all the conversions. It will include items in your chests and um, well the first step is uh, converting all the player inventories. So that's a single player map here so it's only um, convert converting one inventory and the default player name is, well, player. But if you're on an SMP map, it will convert all inventories for every player. It might even work with uh, other dimensions like the end or maybe even the ether. I never played that mod. But um, if you have mods that add dimensions and you use some red power stuff in those dimensions, this script will probably be able to convert them. I'm not sure. I didn't test it with anything but the neither, but this works quite well. And well, after running the script, you should be good. The only thing that's missing at the moment, I'm not converting items in other uh, in other inventories than chests. So you can have items in filters or uh, furnaces. I will not be converting those. Uh, I might add that at a later, later point, but um, for now I think uh, it's pretty good for, well, for start. Well, I did run the script on my SMP servers map and some of you might remember this room. I took a video over here some time ago and all, most of the stuff is still here. As you can see, it's uh, my SMP server and, well, 
you can see some of the new stuff over here and it is actually working quite well so as i said i wanted to share some more or less random bits of information i forgot in the other videos or whatever so let's just start and not ramble a lot the item detector as i said has um, an inventory now i only mentioned it can now um, hold nine different items but uh, i failed to mention that it did not have an inventory before so um, as you might have expected when you put items in the detector it will only emit your pulse for the items coming through that match one of the items in here so as you can see if i put some cobblestone and dirt in the chest use a transposer to well, push it through the detector into this chest over here it will only emit pulse and play the note when the item is dirt because as i said dirt it's is what's in here and well that's pretty much what the inventory in the detector is for um well and because uh, the the reason why i actually thought about showing this is because i used the third mode in um, my read farm over there i'll be showing you um, what to do with that in a moment um well but ah. why why i was um, rebuilding this farm is because some of the behaviors changed um, in this farm i was using the fact that if you put a redstone signal on a block so um, this redstone signal is now only connected to the block but the block itself is not powered if i power the block as you can see when i put the uh, red alloy wire on the block it will power this yellow lamp and power will well um, give a signal to an adjacent block this used to be the case for machine blocks like the block breaker so before this this current update pr4 if i did something like this and connect connected the power to a block before this second machine block would be power two but as you can see now it only powered the first block that's a deliberate change by lrm because uh, well actually it's more sane in this way but um, well because of the limitations the regular redstone dust has uh, i think mojang implemented it in a way that you can actually power a block and that will power an adjacent block but well that's a change and this change broke my read farm and that's why i rebuilt the read farm and while building the read farm i well changed my um, jamming detection to actually use this third mode in the item detector and um, well after rambling about this i will just uh, show you my read farm and how i did this and well you will see what i was talking about so this is my read farm over here as you can see it's basically just some reed under these uh, wooden covers there's the water so the reed is actually growing directly near the water 
above each read there is uh, one block to grow and above that there are the block breakers which will just harvest the grown read. So before I changed my design I was actually using a line of redstone wire like this uh, well on this side too and I was uh, counting on this block breaker um, while transmitting the signal to the to the second one because that doesn't work anymore only half of my farm was actually working so I redesigned the farm to use the new redstone tubes so very simple I simply replaced all the tubes running on the block breakers with well, redstone tubes, and these will transmit the signal well even better than what I was using before. And um, I had an installation where this timer also pulsed up um, a counter. The counter was counting up, and when there were no reads coming through this item detector, the, item, the signal from the item detector resetting the counter so if the counter actually reached its maximum count it would emit a signal and power this orange lamp over here but since uh, the detector now has this wonderful jamming mode when there is no more space available in any of the chests let me just uh, remove that chest over here so, if there is uh, no more room in connected inventories and read is coming in to the item detector, the item detector will well, keep the, uh, the excessive read and will start, as you can see now, and will power this line with a constant signal until it's no longer jammed and uh, well since all these chests are already full it can't deliver any of the read into a connected inventory so if I put this chest back it will put the read in the chest and the jam is resolved and this orange warning light will be turned off. So that's basically how it works. You can, uh, well, well, you can just uh, well, use this lever to turn the, the farm on and off. Like this. Uh, it only changes the light and stops the, the counter by supplying a signal over here. This NOT gate will, will stop the timer and the timer is connected through these uh, well, it's stitched to the to this wire and uh, I'm using some jacketed wire to connect to the tubes this is um, a hollow cover so the tubes and jacket wires will go through the hole in the hollow cover these guys here yeah and that's basically the whole automatic read farm it's uh, actually quite impressive how much read you can gather in a very short amount of time you can see I've got plenty and well you can build a lot of bookshelves or sugar or whatever you want to do with this um, well while I'm at it I can also show you my last farm I already built some time ago that's pretty archaic um, well archaic whatever so um, it's still using water currents for transportation um, 
I don't know if you knew the cacti, if they grow and there is a block um, next to the piece it grows, the, it um, does not prevent the cactus from growing, but uh, after growing it will directly drop off as an item. So you lose some of the um, tactile pieces because they drop not in the water but somewhere here or well somewhere where there's no water flow but the most of them go into the water flow and this is completely passive so um, it's very easy to build a larger array of cacti but even this little farm provides me with quite a lot of cactus and um, I'm not using that much dye that I need any of this, uh, all of this, so um, this is plenty for me, but of course you could build it much bigger and better and even use transposers or whatever. So this water slide just feeds into this other water slide and this one will just feed into this transposer and I don't even need a signal because um, any item just going right through this, like this, will simply be put into this chest and it's actually very easy to build and the only thing missing before red power was a way to put the items uh, gathered at this spot into the chest. So you could have been using the allocator before, but uh, well, the transposer does pretty much the same block, uh, the same job. Um, but it's so well integrated with all the other stuff in Red Power. Um, well, and that's basically the whole point. It's um, very cohesive. All the machines work pretty well together, and that's something that's well, pretty unique to Red Power, um, in my opinion. It's one of the best uh, cohesive integrated mods. So um, I'm not bashing other mods uh, here. So it, it's just, it's my preference. It's very powerful, but in my opinion, it's also still quite balanced. And um, you can't do, ex well, very crazy stuff without investing a lot of resources but um, well you're very free in doing whatever you like so um, yeah these are the farms um, I think I wanted to show you one last thing um, I will go on a trip for that um, I built a new castle with a friend of mine I don't know, I will I will go over there. I'll probably cut up the video because I'm just rambling at the moment. So, um, but I'll just see what I will cut. So, um, you might have seen this stuff in my, our server showcase, show video. I did some time ago. Um, I think there are quite a lot of interesting buildings in there, so uh, if you haven't seen it you might want to check it out. Uh, there are minecarts everywhere. I hate it when they do that. So some of my friends do not put the cards back into the chests. Well anyway. Oh, uh, this was um, an automation. So if you come from this side, it will uh, start the cart after 10 seconds if you didn't get out. But since there was a cart in my way, um, yeah, the cart went without me. So um, we built this uh, whole system of railways in the nether because um, for every block you travel in the nether you will travel eight blocks in the overworld 
So that's a pretty easy way to travel far distances. And, um, well, that's pretty neat, actually. So here we are. And here I built some other cool stuff. Oh, oh cool stuff. Um, it's primarily about the architecture. Um, I'll just make a quick detour to show you some of my new stuff over here. Um, yeah. You see, it's a non-automatic melon farm. I, well, just give that, that, just that to, well, feed myself while I, while I was building this whole thing over here. I started building some uh, automated furnaces with a retriever. Very nice tool. That's not completely finished over here. Um, well, this is uh, all Red Power micro blocks. It's a very nice way to uh, see below without actually walking on the on this um, side. I always found myself uh, when I built my first castle and on the walls there were uh, all these full blocks. I was always walking on the blocks instead of the way in the middle because I wanted to see where I was going or what was going around uh, on around me. So. Um, I decided to make half blocks in this castle so I can actually see something without walking on the side. Um, yeah, pretty boring here. I will probably cut this um, anyway. I did something quite time in intensive over here. As you can see, that's a huge counter. You might have seen my counters in the other videos, but this time I built quite a lot of it. I think those are eight digits and you can count to 99,999,999 ,999, and it's, uh, well, all the counters are basically the same design, so I simply build one and then I uh, well, just use this design to uh, build all the others the same way. It's quite a lot of material, but uh, well, I was going crazy. This is currently not really working. I'm not sure why exactly that is. I think um, I found a little bug. I already told LRM, but I'm not sure if it's a red, an actually red power bug or if it's just my server. Um, the basic concept, I'm building these D flip flops using um, multiplexers like this. And basically you'd expect this and it um, did work actually in before I converted the world. Maybe it's even that. Um, but whatever the reason, for me currently these flip flops do not, well, flip and flop, not um, as you'd expect. As you can see, the signal was lost, although it should not be. And uh, I'm well, amazed that it does not. I think it's a bug, but well, I'll figure it out somehow. And when I do, I'll make a video about this one and I'll be building a huge sorting machine and whatnot. Uh, we'll see.
come on. So, um, over there, you see Christmas is uh, quickly approaching. But um, that's not why I was going over here. No, I wanted to show you this guy over here. That's one hell of a furnace. So we have a very impressive cobblestone generator over here. This guy is uh, only for show. You don't need to make it that large. Um, it's just, it looked nice. That's why we did it this way. And we had the space, so. Um, what it does is uh, just feed those chests with some cobblestone. And the whole idea of this design is all these chests, uh, furnaces, sorry, all these furnaces are equally far apart from this tube over here. So um, when I put some whatever, um, cobblestone in this case, into this tube, the equal distribution will put every piece into another furnace. Those are 64 furnaces and well I will just show you how it looks. The first junction is over here so each well every even one will go here and every odd one will go here and then it splits up over here and it's also divided equally. Then those split up over here and there and there and over here again. So it looks pretty amazing if you ask me. Seeing this large and fast stream of uh, cobblestone going through the tubes and well then at the endpoints you can see when they are distributed from going pretty fast over here to pretty slow over here. It, you can still see it's a cool looking feature of those tubes and I can't stress it enough it's really handy to do this. There are for um, different setups you can of course use the new tagging and the sorting machine but we built this before do, uh, before PR4 so we didn't have any item tagging and well I think it looks really cool and it's also really fast. So um, I'll just turn th this off so we don't lag all that much. Uh, over here it's a small tree farm that's uh, supplying those furnaces over here with wood to make some charcoal. And the charcoal over uh, from here can be delivered to uh, the furnaces from below through those tubes. Those, those are not equally distributed. Those are simply, I will just fill this furnace and then that and um, I'm just filling them up. And uh, if you have enough um, charcoal, you'll simply be using all the slots and that's why it fills it up. So anyway, there is coal in there and there is stone in there and they're cooking up some stone. And because we didn't have the retriever also, we just uh, put up some transposers, connected those and um, each level looks pretty much the same. There are even only four levels. So, um, and, oh well, yeah, let me just check that 
there's enough room. I'll just uh, put some of the cobblestone from this chest into other chests. So all the cobblestone goes into this chest first and you can see how fast it goes. As you can see we already made quite a lot of cobblestone. It's really easy using such a setup. Cobblestone generator generating the cobble, um, having a tree farm which uh, supplies charcoal and well it's pretty much infinite stone and um, well once there is a crafting machine available you can also make the stone bricks and other other stuff so i'm really hoping for that pretty soon but uh, well we'll get it anyway some time and when we have it I will build some pretty amazing artifactories for that. But anyway, let's just turn it on and now the transposers connected to the furnaces will uh, receive the stone. At first it's quite slow but it will get faster over time. So. Um, if this baby is running at full speed, you'll be receiving quite a lot of stone. As you can see, it's uh, incredible. That's not sped up. This is the, the speed at which stone is delivered. It's actually really crazy. Amazing. So, um, yeah. You can't use it up as fast as, it, as, it, as it's coming in. So, um, yeah, these are the things I wanted to show you in this video. And um, yeah, primarily SMP works and it's great. And if you have an SMP map with red power in it, uh, you might want to consider converting the level with my converting script well or if you're not uh, comfortable using python linux command lines and whatever uh, there is also the tool midas that's that's a java tool with a graphical user interface but you'll have to enter all the item ids yourself and um, well i took a look but i decided uh, I wanted to do my own thing and automate this and not, um, well, do everything manually. Okay, um, thanks for watching and see you next time.